So, uh, I'm going to start this one off with a serious, serious note. I'm thinking about doing a name change, as insane as that sounds. I get it. Sounds crazy, right? This guy must be coming mentally unhinged. If he hates himself so much, he wants to basically do a rebrand of his entire persona, okay? But it's not crazy, all right? When you're a minor internet celebrity, sometimes you just have to change your name, and sometimes you have to be a little crazy, okay? You know, this guy, life's beating him down so much, he doesn't even want to be reminded of his past by being called Sam Hyde. What's wrong with him? Well, I just explained what's wrong with him. Potentially, if that was true, you don't know that's true or not. Yeah, you don't know me. I might be fine. I might be doing well. You have no idea. But uh, on a serious note, I am going to be changing my name. And it's going to be... Uh, I'm changing my name to Cigar. Because I want to be reminded of my favorite thing when people talk to me. Hey, Cigar. Yeah, Cigar would be nice right about now. Can I help you? How can I help you? Right? Makes sense. In a sick way. In the way that a lot of sick things make sense. Makes sense in a sick way. Using retarded sick person logic. But that's a joke. I'm not going to go by the name Cigar. Don't call me Cigar! Because they're not my favorite thing. This is a movie prop. I do not enjoy this. I'm doing this for extra views. Because when you see the stinking smoke, it makes you click the ads more. Right? Stinking smoke. Don't you feel commercial like buying something? Stinking. Look how... Look how commercial friendly that is. Also, visual ASMR. Let's see if we can focus on the ash. Let's see how close we can get with the ash. That is sickening. That is sickening. <laughs> oh. Because when there's one, you know what? When I see a cigar, a big stinking, filthy, stank, cigar, I think I want to spend $20 on steam. I, I like those Amazon buttons that you press and you get a refill on your Tide, okay? And when I see a stinking cigar, I think, you know what, I do need some Ziploc bags. So that's part of it. I'm thinking I can triple the ad revenue if I start going by cigar. Because when you see me, you'll be reminded of stinking ash and that will remind you that you like the Amazon buttons that you press to get a refill on bounty paper towels. You see how that works? It's sick logic, but this is the way people in Hollywood think. And I am a person in Hollywood. Check it out, Hollywood, California, right out here. Hey, Mr. Big, I'll see you over at the, uh, over in uh, Soho House. We'll work out a deal for the movie later. Hollywood style. Okay, back to seriousness. I am thinking about doing a name change. Not to Cigar and not for any of the reasons listed above. I'll get into it in a second. Let's get, let's get rolling here. Let's get on the road. You and me on a road trip? Are you kidding me? A road trip with Sam Hyde? That sounds like so much fun. What, are you kidding me? Being in a car with Sam Hyde for 10 hours? Hmm. I think of myself as a 270 pound air freshener. That's sort of the way I feel when I walk into, that's one of the, I'll get into that later, but uh, as you can imagine, it's a problem. Now we got this backup camera, it's like playing Grand Theft Auto, basically. I don't like it, because I know that I'm gonna kill somebody while watching through the backup camera one of these days. But it's right there, it looks like a video game. I love it. What don't they pack into this Ford Edge lease? The cheapest Ford SUV lease that I could get. I went ahead and did it, because I had to do something. Um, 
Where was I? Oh yeah. So the real name change. I've decided, and this is purely for entertainment reasons, okay, and because honestly it would be pretty badass, okay? I mean, who wouldn't change their name if you were given an opportunity to, right? There's, there's nothing more normal than going to work or school the next day and being like, hey guys, um, I want to start being called Barrett, like Barrett from Final Fantasy VII. That's all. That's the only thing. No big deal, guys. Just call me Barrett. However, if I were gonna, if I were gonna change my name to Barrett, it would be after Barrett Jackson, fucking thing. It would be because of uh, Barrett Jackson Auto Auctions. Because I love 57 Chevys so much, I go to Barrett Jackson Auto Auctions. And this is called six minutes of being a retard for ad revenue. This is called six minutes, six minutes in heaven. Uh, back to the, uh, back to business, okay? Back to basics, but also back to business. We keep it basic when we're doing business. Always. Business is always personal. I'm just sort of giving you little morsels and insights here while I'm adjusting the tripod, uh, the little camera mount, because I don't want there to be dead space, so I want you to have every minute of speech be valuable so that you know, hey, he was just adjusting his camera, but business is never basic. Right there, I gave you a whole business school speech in one little fragment, and that's maximizing your time. Business, never basic. Um, oh yeah, okay. Rewind. We already did that joke. <laughs> that was so funny. I hope someone appreciated that when I rewound to being baby Sammy. That's just so good, man. Because it also addresses the whole age play thing. You know. Okay? Business. All right? Hold on. That's better. <laughs> yes, officer, I was just adjusting the exposure on my vlog. Officer, I'm not gonna turn down $300 in ad revenue for nothing. Uh, what the fuck was I even saying? Oh yeah. So here's the deal. I want to change my name just to spice it up. Holy shit! Okay, I remember that the last time I realized I was spewing total bullshit was at the six minute point. And now we're at the nine minute point. And we call that free ad revenue. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Uh, <coughs> uh, thank you very much, Backwood Cigars, official sponsor. And, uh, alright, this is retarded. Alright. A little bit of retardation. Got to get the exposure right, so you can see this wisp of, I call it angel hair pasta, on my head. <laughs> um, 
All right, so serious, down to serious brass tacks here. After the 10 minute intro, we call that showmanship, we call that panache, uh, flavor, zest, spice, okay? You gotta throw a 10 minute intro in there once in a while, okay? Casino owners know this. You don't just let the people come in and start start playing at the tables. You gotta give them, you gotta finesse them. You gotta get them warmed up. You gotta get them juiced up, okay? You gotta give them the 10 minute spicy. You gotta give them the 10 minute zazzle. You gotta give them the 10 minute shabam. All right? You gotta give them the 10 minute 30 second swizzle sticks. All right? You gotta give them the 10 minute 45 second cock tease. You gotta give them the 11 minute uh, showboat. All right. I wonder if anyone's gonna make a compilation of me saying all right from this video. Don't do that. So I was thinking about it and um, talked to my parents, talked to my rabbi, talked to you know pretty much every important person in my life. And uh, I've decided to go through with it. My name change, I'm going with Cody. Yes, folks, that's right. From now on, Sam Hyde will be known as Cody. Didn't pick out a last name, doesn't matter. We can just go with Cigar, Cody Cigar. Okay, and the reason why Cody sounds a little dumb, however, it would make me more likable, I think, in my opinion. And the thing is, no one that I know personally technically likes me, okay? They're sort of in this web of deceit and manipulation and financial dependency that I have engineered for them, but uh, I don't know anyone who really likes me. And... I think if I go with Cody, it's going to sort of introduce a new, like, playfulness and fun and, oh man, that's Cody. Cody's coming by later? Cool. I, I'll overlook the fact that he's 270 pounds and, and fragrant and always thinks like cigars and food. I'll ignore that because Cody's like chill, dude. Cody's so chill. Whoa, cool. Like, that's the way I sort of view people looking at me and treating me after this name change, okay? And also when it comes back to the whole web of manipulation and deceit, I think it will add a new layer that I would call intimidation because Sam Hyde is not very intimidating. You know, no one hears the name Sam Hyde and just gets, gets a chill down their spine, starts uh, shaking. That was cool, there was a trailer truck over there with the John Player Special race colors. It's like quick something. But it was gold and black. I liked seeing that. I hope there's a guy that works at the uh, shipping company who's into vintage race cars who was like, fuck it, we're going to have our trailer trucks painted gold and black. Um, so Cody is kind of like, he's sort of like badass. Like he's sort of really intimidating. He's not the type of guy you want to mess with. Okay, I think I'm going to basically be seeing a big decline in the index of people messing with me and not taking me seriously when I'm going with Cody, okay? And you wouldn't think that. It doesn't sound like... There's no, like, famous stockbroker, okay? There's no famous U.S. Marine. All right, my heroes, my personal heroes, I'd love to be a badass U.S. Marine and kill people who I disagree with, uh, but there's none of those people named Cody, so you might not think that it's badass. However... Try this on for size. Oh, dude. Cody's coming over later? Oh, man. I think he's, like, pissed at me for eating all his chips. How you like them apples? Okay. Try this on for size. Oh, uh, dude. Cody's coming over later? He, like... Dude, last time that guy was here... He didn't take his shoes off and he was getting his dirty ass feet all over the rug. Okay, so in a way, Cody is the most badass persona. Cody Cigar is the most badass persona that you've ever heard of, okay? Because you take a US Marine, for example, what's he gonna do to you? Kill you? I mean, yes, obviously, but 
you can you can defend against them because you'll see him coming from a mile away because he'll have stickers all over his car, for example. He'll be collecting money for the Wounded Warrior Project. There are many ways to defend against the U.S. Marine attack. Whereas with Cody, you won't suspect it until it's too late. And that's what I want to, that's sort of how you become a likable, cool person is by being unpredictable, dangerous, and vengeful uh, at the drop of a hat, and also paranoid. All right. Fuck, I did it again. I just added to that kid's compilation of me saying, all right, that is so inane. This thing just went, fuck! We're gonna have to think of a different word besides all right. Because I was just gonna say, all right, this thing's gone out, referring to my cigar. But that would have played right into his hands. This anonymous editor who tortures me with clips of myself saying, all right, like some retarded. Tourette syndrome homo. All right. We're going to think of another word and we're just going to go with whatever comes to mind. Strawberry shortcake. Okay? So, strawberry shortcake, this thing just went out. Try to make an edit with that. Dipshit. Okay? I'm 10 steps ahead of you. I might even edit all up. I might edit out every instance of strawberry shortcake from this video, cut you off at the pass. Or I might leave it in due to laziness, but also just to fuck with your head, just to get inside your little nugget cranium encapsulation and start tinkering around. What can I do in there? I'm like a mad scientist. I'd like to get in there and mess around, see what's going on. What could we do? Okay, maybe I want you to make that edit. Maybe I want you in my sick little fantasy storyline you're editing me all day, and at this point, we're basically in John Le Carre spy territory. Who's double-crossing who? And it's a moot point, and we can just relax. And now you can just relax. You don't have to make that edit of me saying all right over and over again, because we both, you know that I know. Okay, there's another, you know, there's another 300 people. I don't know how many people watch these videos. There's another, let's say there's 50 people watching these videos. There's another 50 people who watch this video and they know the whole drama, they get it, okay? They get that you're macho man, all right? You're trying to cuck me all day. I'm the beta bitch, I'm your bitch, sir. Yes, sir, yes, sir! Okay, maybe I'm kneeling in front of you and you're in a military outfit and I'm worshiping your boots, okay? Because the edit you did of me saying all right is so devastating to my character, okay? We get it, you're a tough guy. Whoa, all right? Uh, But uh, between you and me, the other people watching this video, they're lemmings. They could never play our game. They could never tap dance with the devil the way we do together. So we work better as a team. Contact me. Email me a bunch of times. I will reply. Get on my Facebook. Talk to the Indian person who's answering my Facebook messages for me. She will reply to you for $2 an hour. <laughs> Um, moving on. It's time to move on. It's time to move on. Uh, where was I at there? Cody's my new name. Sick Mind Games. What else did I want to talk about? Oh, yeah. All right, we're at the 19 minute mark. And I know from past professional filmmaking experience that this. That this cell phone tops out at 20 minutes, so I'm gonna stop it here. We're gonna go through a time warp process known as an edit. And when you come to, you're gonna basically go into a coma. And when you come out of this coma, you're gonna be greeted by your favorite person, okay? You're gonna be greeted by the guy that takes care of you, is there to protect you, okay? He's not gonna hurt you, he only has your best interest at heart. And he's gonna be walking you through your life at that point, and picking up the pieces. We call that picking up the pieces. Donate to Patreon. My this may come as a shock to you, 
but approximately three and a half seconds passed between then and now. I'm gonna give you another three and a half seconds to come to grips with that fact. Uh, and I just sort of ended up at Chick-fil-A again like I'm on autopilot or something, even though I wanted to go somewhere less greasy. I think I'll just do that. Nah, fuck it, I need to get work done. Oh my god. There's a murdered out Corvette over there with a, a big ass uh, GT wing. And it was, uh, he was ripping it up. Okay. <sighs> I'm just gonna sit here and watch these young boys play mini golf. Nothing weird about that. There's some young boys over there playing mini golf. I'm just gonna watch them smoke my cigar. Just a normal man, shirt unbuttoned, filming himself. Unkempt hair, slightly obese, looking like a lot of problems rolled up into one person, smoking a cigar, watching some young boys playing mini golf. Oh my goodness. All right, that's kind of sick. I'm just gonna get well, fuck elsewhere. That's too weird now because I, I pointed it out. Um, and if I do a reverse angle, I won't be watching it, but you'll be the one watching it, and you're gonna be there. Are gonna be some sickos. Don't look. I don't want you seeing the angle there. I'm protecting the innocence of these children right now because fucking half of you are probably pederasts and we're not going to watch these kids playing mini golf. All right. Whew. Disaster averted. And you can watch some fat people eating. How about that? Um, let me just relight this fucking thing. This nasty stick. Uh... There's a lot of dead air in these these podcasts here, isn't there? But I think it's good. Isn't that what YouTube's for, is watching mentally ill people uh, fucking be fascinated and uh, be OCD? That's what you love, right? If you wanted actual information, you'd be reading a book right now. How about that? Oh. I'm a bit of a cigar connoisseur. First thing I learned was uh, I learned everything I know from the uh, the guy the Indian. The Indian uh, snack shop owner downstairs who, he taught me everything I know about cigars, so. First thing you gotta appreciate about a fine cigar, the longer it is, the better it is, okay? The more phallic and the longer it is, the more of a, what they call, in the industry they call it a fancy cigar, so. Now, at the gas station, the ones that they have in the vacuum-sealed packs, this is a game cigar. Maybe you've seen it at your local 7-Eleven or Shell Station or similar. Uh, and game makes very high-end, again, what they call fancy cigars. Uh, I don't tend to not to smoke them too much because I, they're more for rich people. Um, when you spend, you know, you spend more than $2 on a Stogue, uh, that's more into the rich territory, okay? Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sly Stallone, you'll see them often smoking game cigars from vacuum sealed packs that they get at the local Hollywood gas stations, etc., etc., and on and on, okay? It's a whole deep world of uh, fascination. Now, when you first get a cigar and you unwrap it, you're gonna want to, this outer layer here, this leaf, it's called the binding leaf, you wanna take that off. I leave it on because it's a little idiosyncrasy that I have, okay? Everybody's got their style, but uh, you wanna sort of peel this off right away. And then what you do is you deeply, deeply inhale like that, okay? And do this in the store with people watching you. Um, you want to do that in front of as many people as possible to sort of let them know that you know your shit, okay? Uh,
It's basically all there is to it. You want to tap it on something every 30 seconds to get that ash off. That ash right there, that's too much ash on a cigar. And when people see this, they're going to know you're a novice. You need to keep it clean at all times. That's what the cutter is for. The cutter is so that every once in a while you can go down and snip off that ash right there. That's called the tailwind in the business. Uh, and the fancier cigars will have a shorter tailwind. You need to slice that off right away. And that's all there is to it, really. Um, not much more complicated than that. You want to try to smoke about 10 of them a day to really sort of enjoy them. Uh, and that's it. So, guys, get out there. Start smoking cigars. Knock yourselves out. Enjoy. There's your tip from Cody Cigar. And I can do a cigar blog, too. I'm not going to do that because that would be too... That would be too on-brand, on-message. That would be a little too hokey. People would expect that. Okay, Cody Cigar, what's he doing? A cigar blog? Because he's changed his name, his last name's Cigar now? Ah, predictable. Okay? And like I said, to cultivate an air of intimidation, to have people walking on eggshells around you, to have it so that you're sort of a negative force in people's lives generally, you want to be unpredictable, malicious, and vengeful at all times. We call that the triple threat. And there's a visual representation of the triple threat because it's a hill that you climb to success. Okay? I like to watch these cars going by out here and I wonder, you know, I wonder if some of them are looking over here at me in this car and thinking to themselves, oh my god, is that Sam Hyde, the celebrity? Oh my god, it's an honor, sir, to meet you. That probably, that guy in the bike right there is probably thinking just that. Don't you think? He's, was he, did he just look, he looked back over his shoulder, he was just to verify that it was me that he's talking to. <laughs> There's like three people in this traffic right here who just noticed me. That's amazing. But in Hollywood, you see celebrities all the time. Here at the Hollywood Five Guys, check it out. Come on down to the Hollywood Five Guys. Okay, here's one, uh, here's the serious, here's what I wanted to talk about. So you had your seven, your 27 minute intro. <laughs> you had your 27 minute intro. And this is in the, this is fucking retarded. In the YouTube playbook, okay, in the you in when you when you have a master subscriber, that's what that's what YouTube calls it. They call you a master subscriber. When you basically what it means is that you your the force of your personality, charisma, talent, effort, energy have made YouTube probably over two hundred thousand dollars at this point. That's probably what I've personally made YouTube just from my vlogs. Uh, probably more like seven hundred thousand though. But uh, when you get to that point, they, they call you a master subscriber. They actually call you, what do they call you? Partner? Oh yeah, partner. So the, the uh, PDF, the little playbook that Google sends out to its partners about how to best uh, cultivate the mass of lemmings, that would be you. How best to motivate the great unwashed uneducated, do-nothing masses known as viewers, that's the technical term for what they call that, how best to manipulate you into um, doing what is uh, desired by advertisers, which is they have tips like you should publish every Tuesday and Thursday at these hours because that's when blah, blah, blah. It's like it's the kind of stuff that uh, Casey Neistat, Neistat goes, uh, goes real hardcore on. But in there, what would the fuck, what, what did I even start talking about that for? Uh, that's not good, I just got totally sidetracked. Subscribers, master subscribers. All right. Well, oh, no, 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 it's because in that, in that, uh, in that pamphlet, 
they specify that to keep uh, to maximize attention to get they actually have they use they use your webcam to scan your retinas to see when uh, when and where you're looking at the screen okay and according to those various uh, matrixes and indices uh, the best possible thing to do is to have a 30 minute intro before you get to your content so if you want to make money always go with the 30 minute intro then get to your content okay by the time people have stopped watching you <coughs> becoming unhinged in your car where you spend most of your time you want to have about 30 minutes before you get to the point And the point was, is this, which is one of the most um, superpower, one of the most powerful superpowers that you can have as a human being. And this is something that, this is something that people with their shit together, which is a category that you don't fall into, do automatically, just so you know. This is not like some... Machiavellian uh, thing or tactic. This is something that normal people who wake up before noon and uh, make money doing something do, and it's this. I might have I might have mentioned this before. Eject toxic people from your life. That is a superpower. Now I don't mean, I don't mean abandon people when they become difficult or inconvenient to you or when they, you know, when you have to do something, when you, when it's uh, expected of you to do something for someone else. I don't mean all the regular human things. However, uh, everybody should realize that uh, there's the idea that all people are inherently good and just suffering some sort of uh, psychological malady or under a lot of pressure or whatever, okay? And a lot of people believe this, and it, it may or may not, uh, it may or may not be true that that's the case. I don't think it is, but I also don't care because treating it like it's effectively not the case, okay, uh, will, will help you out immensely. So this is people who are, for whatever reason, uh, you know, s s psychological trauma, or usually they're just bad people. They're just people who are not fully realized, people who are not, um, just not grown up, okay? Um, and a lot of the time it's just, it's just malicious, selfish people who... The, co the concept of thinking about life from somebody else's perspective is, is completely alien and uh, not something they're at all interested in doing. But toxic people, okay, so this is not, this is not um, your mom when she nags you too much or your, um, you know, your girlfriend or your significant other when they're being obnoxious or, uh, or difficult or, or whatever. Uh, but this is, this is people who are flagrantly a net negative. People who are poisonous. People who are uh, like, like, a, like an energy sponge. People who are abusive in ways that are, that's not, it's, it's tricky because you can't really, a lot of these people, there'll never be something that you can point to and go, that is abusive, right? It's not, I'm not talking about like, you know, the guy that's uh, beating your, beating your wife or your husband or, or having bouts of physical violence, but I'm talking about, um, abuse that happens it's like a slow trickle over years. And it comes in, in various forms, whether it's, whether it's neglect or just, um, uh, like fl flagrant, uh, damaging selfishness or whatever, okay, you know who these people are in your life because thinking about them immediately puts you in a bad mood, stresses you out, whatever, okay, and, um, my advice is just to have a cigar, the longer the better, we call them fancy, 
and relax. Okay, relax it out. Take the time to talk it over with them. Just kidding, don't do that. Um, <clears throat> but you know, you know who I'm talking about because you've encountered somebody like this where the very mention of their name you know, makes you grind your teeth or makes your shoulders tense up or makes your back hurt or whatever. You're, it, it could even be that you're, you're not having, they, you, don't, you don't have bad thoughts about them, but your body tells you to stay the fuck away from these people. Um, I mean, I, I, uh, had this girlfriend, I had tremendous, tremendous, mysterious back pain, like unbelievable. So I was in this relationship and I was like, wow, this, I love this girl. Um, it's whatever. She doesn't seem that she's not that good on paper, but whatever. I'll just, I'll, I'll guess I'll just date her for 10 years. And I was having this, like, sickening, crazy back pain from, like, out of nowhere, okay? Like, no reason, tried everything in the world to make it go away. And as soon as we split, it went away completely, all right? So, I guess just take from that, just pay attention. If you're, if you're too stupid, if you're too gullible, I suffer from those problems. I'm, I'm a people pleaser. Uh, I want everybody around me to be happy. I don't want, I, I hate social friction. I don't like when my friends are upset or something's bothering them or whatever. Um, and uh, I, I usually take what people say at face value until they've fucked me over about 20 times. Um, and I'm crying right now. I'm crying because I'm weeping because this is so heartbreaking. And uh, no, this is not heartbreaking. This is not something to get emotional over. This is the, the mental and uh, life lifestyle equivalent of uh, how to clean up dog shit in your yard, okay? And it's a skill that you have to, that some people have to learn. Some people are good. Some people can just, uh, you know, they, they decide that someone is a, is a negative influence in their life and it's like, peace, see you later, we're done. Like, it's e I guess it comes easily for some people. I'm the exact opposite of that. And um, if you're a beta male pussy like me, it's probably the same for you. Um, but no, that's not true. It's not, it's not related to being alpha or whatever. Um, Nick, I would imagine has s sort of a similar thing because he's, he's, um, he's a high testosterone guy, but he's very like people, he's very people oriented and he would never, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know what it, what it would take to make him say, fuck off, see you later to somebody, um, like that. So to some people, it just naturally is difficult to do that. And when someone, when someone is charismatic, likable, you know, they give you endorphins, they, they, being around them sometimes is, is exciting and fun and, uh, positive, but on the whole, they are just like an abusive flaming train wreck of a person. Uh, you have to kick them to the curb. So that's, um, and that's, literally a superpower. When you get those people out of your life, you become more effective, you feel better, you're healthier, you live longer, you're happier, which means that around other people, you're more, uh, you know, positive, you're, you're better to be around. Like, there are, really are people who can just turn you into a fucking golem by, um, how shitty and, and, uh, venomous they, they are. Whether or not you realize it on the surface layer, how venomous they are inside, or how venomous the, the end result of all their actions over time compounded is. Coexist sticker over there on the Fiat 500, very nice. Perfect car for getting, for getting raped by an Arabin, the Fiat 500. I think that's in the advertising for that car though, so I didn't come up with that. Did you miss me? It was a half second that we were apart. In my eyes, that's too long. I never want to be away from you. Um, and I don't, I don't think, maybe some of you would disagree with me on this, but I don't think that means you have to have crazy high standards for people. I, I like and appreciate and hang out with uh, stupid people, people who are sort of mental, 
in in ways that are not that don't damage the people around them. Uh, you know, everybody. You can be friends with you can be friends with whoever you want to be friends with, but if if being friends with somebody is like just being in a in a constant emotional torture chamber, wise up and get them the fuck out of your life. Because it can't it's not going to change. Okay, you're not going to talk to this person and magically have them go, "Oh, what was I thinking? I've tr- I treated them so badly. Oh boy, I better change my act." That's not going to happen. And that's an ego trip right there because you think to yourself, "Man, if I could get so and so to readjust the way they treat people, it would be like really big because basically they'd be doing it for me." So, they'd be sort of changing their whole personality to like because to stay with me because of how cool I am. Not gonna happen. You're not cool enough to make that happen. The only thing you can do is cut the fucking cord. Isuzu Axiom. Very, very cool car. Reminds me of 90s and 2000s Oakleys, of which I am a fan. Okay? I want those over the top glasses, but they're too expensive. One day I will get Oakley over the top glasses and they will not fit me. Um. But really, uh, this, and this is probably something that like 75 or 85 percent of you are just like, yeah, I already, I already knew that. Why is he telling me something I already knew? And then another <clears throat> like 10 percent of you, who are people like me, who are just too fucking dumb to say no to people, too dumb to to be fine with disappointing someone or letting someone down or giving someone the axe. Okay, you're too fucking. You've never. You're so stupid. You've never done that before. Um, this will be a life-changing tip. That is a life-changing tip right there. Now, a few pointers. A few pointers. When it's time to say goodbye, bye-bye, to these people, don't make it into a, a big thing, okay? Don't even make it into a thing. When you're, de- when you're dealing with someone who doesn't respect you enough to give you, to ever give you a straight answer, that means you don't need to give them a straight answer. You don't need to go to them and say, look, man, I think you're a really cool person or whatever, but, um, it's time we went our separate ways, man. Like, that's the way, that's what you would say to somebody that you have respect for. That's what you would say to somebody that you've, that's treated you, you know, somewhat decently. And that is not what you say to this person. Okay. You don't say anything to them. You let it you let the relationship taper down over time in the least damaging way possible. You don't you don't go for revenge. You don't go for a big fuck you. You don't write them a long email. Hey dude, I think what you did is real shitty. Fuck you. That's not gonna, what are, what is that going to get you? All right? Listen. When you're dealing with people who have respect for you or love you, or are just good people, or are, are decent people, or are even people you've just met who you don't have any reason to suspect that they're pieces of shit, I would say absolutely do, be uh, be on your best behavior. Um, do do everything and say everything in good faith. Don't be don't be manipulative. But when you're dealing with somebody who is a hand a constant constantly detonating hand grenade in your life, that is no longer a person. That is an object. You're dealing with an object, and you have to deal with this object in the most beneficial way to you possible. And that is typically by just slowly becoming a ghost. That's it. That's it. Writing a long, vengeful missive is not going to get you any points, okay? You're not going to be a badass for writing a really scorching email, okay? The only thing they're going to have is something that they can screen cap and show other people to show how unhinged you are, and it's it'll set them off, and they'll and they'll they'll take it personally, and they'll do something to make to put gum in your hair, okay? This is not these are not the types of things you want to be getting into. Um. When, when people flip that switch in your circle of people, when people flip the switch from being human beings to being NPCs in a video game, and there is a time when that happens, okay, as bad as that sounds, that means it's time to 
treat that relationship like a bomb defusal. <clears throat> and usually that's overkill. Usually that is overkill. Usually you don't need to treat social relationships like a bomb defusal, okay? Um, and sometimes you do. Sometimes people will be butthurt enough that you're no longer, that you no longer think they're good enough for your tribe that they will uh, get you uh, an FBI interview or whatever, or whatever it may be, they will um, do something to fuck with you. Sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't matter. Sometimes you'll write an email. Sometimes you could write a big email. Hey man, I'm really upset about what you did. Fuck you. I think you're a piece of shit. Awful person, etc., etc. Here's ten, Here's two pages to show you how little I care about you. Right, sometimes you'll do that and nothing will come of it. Usually. Usually. You'll just get an answer back that's equally insane that's two pages long and that'll be it. But sometimes you'll have people, you know, who decide, uh, who decide to show up outside your house or call your work or whatever, whatever it may be. So it never, it never pays. You'll never, you'll almost, in life, you'll almost never regret not saying something. There's like four times when that's not true and you'll know it, okay? You'll know when, you'll know when you're gonna regret not saying something. Usually, you're not gonna regret not saying something, so don't say something, okay? Say as little as possible. Keep them guessing. 48 Laws of Power. How to be a psychopath. Copyright. Cody Cigar. <clears throat> That's the cops coming to stop me from dropping these world-altering truths on you. That's about it. Um, but uh, you guys are cool. You guys are my friends. Hey, that was uh, that was sort of a dickheadish way to sign off. I didn't want to didn't want to end that one sarcastically by saying you guys are my friends and sort of underlining the fact that you're not my friends. Because um, I like you guys. I've met a lot of I've met a lot of fans, and uh, I generally think you guys are the bomb. Okay, here's looking at you, kid. So don't take that too bad. Also, I wanted to get some more badass, cool shots of me smoking the stove. That I got from uh, Sitgo. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I'm a connoisseur. I got a Sitgo. Ah! 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 Probably disorienting that I changed the camera angle. So, don't worry. I'm trying to think if there's anything else to talk about. Probably not. If you're watching this right now, you're either expecting something extremely poignant on the top tier of philosophy, original, an original piece of philosophy in all the hundred years of philosophy, or however long it's gone on for, however long they had philosophy, something completely new and unscripted to come out of my mouth at the end of this video. And it's coming soon. There's gonna be a big payoff for watching the extra two minute tail end of this video. You're gonna get what you came for. You're not gonna be disappointed on this one. Crush me. Trust me, guys. You're not going to want to miss this one.
What I have to say next is going to shock you. There's something on my chest, on my mind, that's been there for a long time. And I'm going to tell it to you now. As <laughs> as soon as the cigar is finished, I'll let you know. <laughs> as soon as I'm done with this thing, I'm going to let her rip, philosophically speaking. I'm going to smoke this extra fast so that we can get to the end sooner to save you some time. Because if you think about it, this video is going to be watched by what, 75 people? So, 10 seconds of this video is only wasting 10 seconds of my time, and my time's damn near free. I waste as much of it as I want. Because when you're living on welfare, out of a lease that somebody else is paying for, a leased Ford Edge that you don't have to pay for, and you only have $300 to your name, that's probably lower than the last time, because I checked that a few weeks ago when I was making the last video, and I've been eating ramen. So my time is basically free. So when I waste 10 seconds of my time, it's not even worth wasting 10 cents. But wasting 10 seconds of your time means I'm wasting 10 seconds of the time of 75 other people <clears throat> who are watching this. I don't know how many people watch these. 75, 50, maybe that's optimistic. Let's say 10 people. So it's like wasting 100 seconds. I'm wasting 100 seconds with just 10. That's value. Which brings me to my next point, which is the reverse karmic justice of car accidents. And I'm sorry if you or a loved one have died in a car accident. However, if you really think about it, a traffic jam is wasting, what, 20 minutes of someone's time? If I wasted 20 minutes of your time, you wouldn't want to kill me. I wouldn't deserve to die, right? If I wasted 45 minutes of your time, that's a more iffy question situation. However, <clears throat> still probably not worth the death penalty. But if you wasted 20 minutes of a thousand people's time, what is the monetary value of that lost productivity, okay? Question. It's probably a lot. It's probably... It's probably more than uh, the average car accident victim would make in like a year, right? Way more than that. That's not true. <laughs> However, my point is just that when there's a car accident that causes a big traffic jam and it wastes a lot of people's time, that multiplication factor makes it so that the person in that accident deserved to die not entirely, but just a little bit more than they would have otherwise. I'm not saying they deserve to die, okay? They didn't. They didn't, okay? If you have died in a car accident, you did not deserve it. Unless you were a really bad person or you're doing something crazy. Um, but, if you caused a car, a big traffic jam on your way out, then you, you, dis you did technically deserve a, a little bit more to die than you otherwise would have. Does that make sense? And that sounds bad, but it's logical. I'm using logic, okay? You wouldn't, you wouldn't be mad at me if I was using logic to say that, um, you know, something horrible, insert something horrible here. If I was using logic to say it, and pure, what I call rational atheism, in that case, you wouldn't be able to hold it against me, okay? You technically, te I hate to be a bitch about the technical specifications here, but you technically cannot hold a grudge against rational atheists because they're using pure logic to uh, be disgusting ruiners of society. So you have to appreciate them. That's all there is to it. So the seven minutes of my time times a thousand, that's 7,000 minutes down the drain, unless you got something good out of it. Then it's 7,000 minutes of economic benefit. And what did you do to earn that benefit? Did you donate to my Patreon? Link in the description.